We talk about a phone. At each phone in your home, put your name, your address, and your number so that if you have an emergency, you'll know the person with Alzheimer's may be able to read that and say, I am so and so, I live at so and so, and um, be able to answer that information. We tell you to use photo phones because somebody with Alzheimer's will remember that big 911 sign and press it, and so I know that if I press that sign, I will get help. Or that's a kind of familiar face. If I press that face and tell them I'm in trouble, I can get help. We talked about labeling the contents and labeling rooms, doors to rooms, bathroom. Put a picture of a toilet on the bathroom door or label it bathroom. Um, this way the person who is, has dementia will know where to go for that item. Sometimes we have markings down the hallway, especially in, in large homes. We try to guide people with pathways, either with, um, red, with tape to, to lead them down or arrows along the uh, hallway walls. And for rooms that you don't want somebody to go into, sometimes a big stop sign, because it will all try to remember what a stop sign is, and they'll know that they can't go in there. And we'll talk more about doors in a minute. The other thing we tell you to do is Put a no soliciting sign outside and put your telephone to the no smallest number of rings and have it go to an answering machine. Because someone with dementia will think the person at the door is a friend and may invite them in and then may sign you up for a whole new freezer full of food or a new roof or something that you really did not need. So by the telephone and by the door, Make sure that people who you don't want into your home or accessing you are not allowed. So now we're going to talk about secure and modifying your environment, more so than we have. We talked about doors a minute ago. If you look around this room, you notice that back door. You notice the back door, why? Because it's a different color. But if that door, like when that door is closed over there, it's all one great big blue, Somebody with dementia does not know that there's a door there. So we also sometimes paint murals across the walls, depending on the person's environment. But if it's all one color, they won't recognize that there's a door to go out. For doors that you want somebody to go into, you make it a different color like that one. That one's a different color. You know that's a door to go through. Alarms. You can put an alarm. Um, some of them, when you open up a door, it'll jingle. Simple technique, now is the perfect time. Sleigh bells, it's all, every Michaels, Home Depot, you name it, they have them. Put a sleigh bell on your door, so when that door opens up, it'll ring and you'll know somebody is doing something that maybe you don't want them to be doing. Um, we also talked about, we'll talk about rather, putting cues for people. So at your front door, everybody knows this door lock. But if you put a lock up above or below, someone with dementia will not know that there's a lock above or below. They'll try to turn this one, but it's not going to get them anywhere because it's locked in a different place. We recommend that if you do do that, that you put a key hidden nearby your front door and a key hidden outside in case you get locked out. We also tell you to, rem to, to remove cues of that that's being a door. Because I know when I come home, the first thing I do, take out my keys, take out my pocketbook, put them all by the door so that they're right there for me to use when I go out. But that's a cue. So that's the way out. So if they're not there, the person with dementia will not remember that that's a door to go out. Another thing we recommend is putting locks on doors that you don't want people in or you don't want somebody with dementia to be accessing. They now make them for lever handles and they make them for knob handles. And you can buy a wonderful kit at Home Depot, Lowe's, Toys R Us, Babies R Us, Target, Walmart, they all have them. 
and they have wonderful products in those. Those door locks are one of them, as well as um, cabinet door locks and drawer locks, which we'll talk about in a minute. Windows. I had a client who was an escape artist. Couldn't go out the door, decided to go out the window. So what did we do is we put a limiting device on a window. Um, one that you would be able to quickly, if you had to get out of the window in a fire, be able to quickly release, but one that a person with dementia is saying, oh, window's stuck, I can't open it, so I can't go out of it. We talked about the electrical cords, electrical outlets as well. In that handy safety kit, you have those plugs that you used to put in for when they didn't want your kids to access plugs. Well, it's the same thing. There are plugs that you don't want people to access, um, and we'll talk about why in a minute. But you put those in there and then they can't, they'll, they'll try to put it in because it's all the same color as the outlet. They're not going to see that there's something blocking it. Smoke detectors we recommend and, and uh, carbon monoxide detectors to put all over your home. Um, I don't know, on the news the other day there was um, a fireman whose house went up and his smoke detector went off and it saved him and his family. Um, so we definitely recommend you have smoke and CO2 detectors. If you don't know where they, to put them, you can call your local fire department or building department and they can guide you as to the best place. We also recommend that you test them routinely. Make sure there's fresh batteries in them. Another thing we recommend is you practice an escape plan. Plan a route of what would happen if there was a fire or an emergency in your home and how you and the person that you love will get out and practice it often. Because the more you practice, the more you practice, the more you practice, the more it becomes a built-in memory of them, for them to be able to execute. Uh, kitchen. Kitchen is a number one place for a fire to start. And new products are coming out all the time, but my favorites at the moment are, there's a fire suppression system, I don't know if you can see it up here, that fits right up under your hood. So if it senses a fire, and it fits under both a microwave hood as well as a regular hood, if it senses heat or a fire, it automatically releases and uh, suppresses the fire. The one on the other side is an electronic unit that senses if you are there and for how long. And if it senses that you're not there, it'll give you 5, 10, 15 minutes and it'll shut the stove completely off. And it works for gas and electric. We talked about those appliances a minute ago. Somebody with dementia, as it's advancing, you really don't want them to start the coffee in the morning because it may not be coffee that you get. So we tell you to unplug those small appliances and put the plug outlet covers in because then they may try to put it in, but they won't be successful at it. The same as the microwave. Um, you don't want any microwave accidents. We also recommend that you routinely go through somebody who has Alzheimer's refrigerator. Why? Because they lose part of their sense of taste and they're not going to realize that the milk in that refrigerator has gone bad and they'll be drinking it and getting ill. We talked about the child-proof latches and on the cabinets and drawers, especially anything that is breakable that you don't want broken, any place where there's cleaning supplies, medications, alcohol, matches, knives, sharp utensils, plastic bags, and that family junk drawer because I know I have about four of those drawers in my home and if somebody with dementia opens it up they're not going to know what all that little stuff is in there and they could potentially injure themselves on it. We also tell you to remove or lock up hand tools, power tools, guns, machinery, put them in a locked garage, a basement, a shed or better donate them to somebody. Stairs. Do you remember back in the day if you had little kids, you put some kind of gate in front of that staircase? Well, the same as as we get older. Somebody may not be able to see that there's a stair here and trip. So we recommend very highly you put a gate at the bottom if you don't want somebody going up and then a gate at the top so that they don't go down without assistance. We also recommend that you put on your staircase reflective tape um, or, or different color tape to mark the end of the stair because right now, if you look at this quickly, you really can't see that there's three stairs here, especially if you have problems seeing depth perception. This looks like one unit. You take a step, and you may fall on your face or fall down a flight of stairs and get very injured. 
grab bars in a bathroom. As I have mentioned many, many a time, I'm on a crusade to put a grab bar in every bathroom across America because whether you're three or 103, you can use it and it's there for safety and they're made now so beautiful you don't know they're a grab bar. We're doing a bathroom right now. We have four grab bars in it and you wouldn't know one of them was a grab bar. They're at the toilet, they're at the towels, they're in the bathroom holding the handheld. They're a beautiful thing. And we tell you to install them in the tower, the, sho the, the shower, the tub, um, on the, and on the walls as well. 